what is the role of uh, European Union lobbies uh, in front of the uh, uh, European attempts to face the uh, crisis of the Eurozone? Um, from the very beginning, in 2008, when it became clear that the European Union was facing, was, was getting involved in this originally American crisis, uh, there were attempts to find some way out of the crisis. But the, the problem was that the, the expert groups that were called together, and we have one example in our film, that were called together to find some ways of regulating the financial markets, all those members were actually coming from the financial markets and were involved even or entangled with banks who had, a, who had played a role in causing the crisis. And uh, so you have this, this attempt publicly from the, from the public authorities, from the Commission and from the Parliament to find some ways of regulating the financial markets. But at the same time, they are, they are using the lobby powers or let's say the, the lobbying of these of this, uh, financial markets are within the way of, of regulating themselves. And that's of course, not then very, it's of course not a very efficient way of doing the job. Uh, do, you, do you believe that the, um, that the shift of power from the Parliament towards the Commission, the uh, President of the European Union and the European uh, Foreign Minister, which occur to the Treaty of Lisbon, favor in a certain way the lobby's uh, interest? It depends. I think the, the shift of power from the Commission to the Parliament uh, is making the life more difficult for the lobbyists because now they have to deal with much more actors. Because uh, you have one department in the Commission, but then you have several parliamentarians to talk to, so much, much more. Um, on the other hand, it's uh, also the Parliament needs information to make legislation. So also the, the Parliament is dependent on, uh, let's say, input uh, uh, technical expertise pro coming from lobbyists, so they have to listen to the lobbyists. The problem is not that they that uh, lobbying is taking place. The problem is that you don't have uh, a kind of balance of power within the lobby sector. So the lobby interests of big business are far overrepresented if you compare it to the member states. So if you compare it to Italy or to France or to Austria or to Germany, uh, the say that the multinational corporations have in Brussels is much, much higher than they have on a national level. Because on a national level, the, the individual polit politician or the, the individual legislator has to uh, listen also to the small and medium-sized enterprises, which is not the case in Brussels. Uh, which is and which has been uh, and which could be in the future of the attitude of uh, European media towards uh, uh, this system of European lobbyism? Well, uh, the role of the European media is a very difficult one because there is no European media, except maybe Euronews or the International Herald Tribune, which is actually an American newspaper. So the first thing that I think is that there have to be platforms have to be created which are genuinely European, So, which means that they have a European approach, that they are not looking at Europe from the perspective of one single member state, but it's about a European perspective. The second thing is uh, European news are generally thought of uh, belonging to the foreign news department. Instead, we think, so my colleague Mathieu, with whom I made the film, both we think it's actually uh, national news, it's uh, interior news, it's, it's the news next door because what is decided in Europe is what we are eating, what we are drinking, uh, the way we are, uh, the, the way public money is spent, uh, the way taxation, taxation is allowed, the way the welfare system is organized, educational system. So it's our everyday life, it's the, the clothes that are allowed to, to enter Europe mm -hmm. that, which are manufactured abroad. So of course uh, it's, it's it's the day-to-day the -day life which is affected by European legislation and it's not reflected in the media. So it should be really the, you know, you should have the front page and immediately after you should have Europe. And then you have, say, uh, th then you should have national politics and then you should have regional politics. But usually it's the other way around. Yes. Uh, w w what do you think about uh, uh, the, uh, the chances of activists of uh, trying to influence in a certain way uh, European lobbyism? There is any chance of having a, a good, in a certain way, lobbyism far away from neoliberal interests? And uh, what can actually um, European activists do? I would define good lobbyism not as a lobbyism away from neoliberal interests. I, I would define good lobbyism as transparent lobbyism. So, because 
you know, lobbying itself is neutral. Uh, there is no value attached. The thing is, to be transparent, one needs to know if a lobbyist comes to a legislator, which interest is he representing, uh, how much money is involved, and um, are there any ways of influencing which are not okay according to the code of conduct that lobbyists have. So there is that can be good and bad lobbying by both the industry and also the NGOs. NGOs are very present in Brussels and I think they play a much more important role than they play on a national level and this is due to the absence of the trade unions in Brussels. So they have largely been sleeping in the past 20 years when you had this massive transfer of power to the European Union from the nation states. So they have not been proactive or active in engaging in formulating the principles of the European Union. This is why we have the neoliberal outcome of it. So good lobbying is transparent and from the what I would expect from the legislators is also something else. There needs to be a fair lobbying and fair lobbying needs, uh, means that you listen to both sides equally and uh, the way how the um, expert groups are selected need to be very transparent. There needs to be a clear set of rules so that every stakeholder or every important part of society which is touched by the legislation that is going to be decided upon, all of these players are equally involved so that you don't have a majority of five to one on a specific, uh, uh, in, in a specific expert groups deciding on has got to do with the consumer on something that has got to do with um, us as citizens when it comes down to you know civil rights I think this is something that has not been taken into account um, enough on the part of the European legislative bodies so I think they have to be they have to be they have to be clear rules for the expert groups and we don't have them now thank you